Hello and welcome. I'd like to sincerely welcome everybody that is listening on this uh, video. I hope, um, as usual, I make the necessary uh, sense and message sync across relevant people that are listening. Today, I got, I was chatting with somebody today and uh, least to say i was very very angry very very angry because it is a subject that i've convinced myself i was not going to touch but it keeps circling round and round me and i don't know how to uh, circumvent this topic and the topic is this evening, somebody called me. And as a matter of fact, the person who called me was a young man and a fellow, <coughs> excuse me, a fellow Robo man. My own very, very good, beautiful, sweet, lovely Robo brother. And his mission was to try and convince me to come back to IPOB. I would have ordinarily been angry, but I said, let me listen to him and see exactly where he is coming from and possibly where his mission intends to lead us in the conversation. So I let him, I indulged him to continue talking. And then he said that we, by we, I mean the entire South region. We are in a precarious time and uh, our collective existence is being threatened by the caliphate. Which is not strange to me, is a constant narrative that we are all used to. So I told him that yes, it is not uh, it is not new. It, it, what you are saying is actually true. Uh, the Fulanis are actually dominating the polity, dominating NMPC, custom, army, police, everywhere. And then he said that IPOB is the only is the only solution that we have to free ourselves from slavery. Then I asked him, I said, are you in slavery in Nigeria now? He said, yes. What type of slavery are you in? He said, he is under political slavery. You see, this is the type of reasoning that I, as Magnus Oraka, cannot indulge my sensibility into. Let me give you an example. Let me give you a clear example. Let's say we are in a hostel. We are in a hostel. And there are eight of us there. And me, Magnus Oraka, I am the one who bought the television in the house. I am the one who bought the rug in the house. I am the one who painted the house. I am the one with more affluence than every other housemate in the hostel. But the person who dictates the rule is another person from the north. I ask you a simple question. Who is enslaving who? Obviously, the answer I will need to hear is me. Because I have failed to realize my strength. Because I am the one who finances the house. Ordinarily, by implication, I should automatically have the power to dictate what happens in the house. But if I fail to recognize my own power, having been the one that finances that hostel, there's somebody else who recognizes there's an opening 
to take over control, we obviously control. And that's exactly what is hoping, happening to us. So I ask you a question. We are not under any type of slavery in Nigeria. The slavery, okay, no, we are, we are under slavery in Nigeria, but we are not under slavery to the Fulanis. The type of slavery we are in is slavery to our own selves, we Southerners. We are slaves to our own self. We are slaves to our our intelligence. We are too intelligent for ourselves. We are slave, slaves to our cunning ways, cunningness. We are slaves to our, our over sabi. We are slaves to our ability to want to, you know, exude mastery of the English, English grandiloquence. Because I see no reason in Nigeria where we have an industrious Igbo. We, we have an industrious Igbo nation with heavy population. We have a south-south region with the wealth that feeds the nation. We have the Yoruba population with high number of professors, high number of intelligentsia. Yet, we still submit ourselves a professor from the region will still choose and gladly and happily be a vice president to somebody without a school sat. So I ask you, who is enslaving who? Is it not ourselves? Because no Fulani professor, a Fulani who has attained a professorate degree, will agree to be vice president to an illiterate Igbo man. It's not possible. Because the house has, they have political pride. We will have political greed. Let me repeat it again. The North have political pride. We in the South, we have political greed. Like Umahi of, uh, of uh, Umahi of uh, Ebony State. When Governor Sambo was removed from the governor of Kaduna State and was made vice president to Good Luck Jonathan, the youth in Kaduna went and burnt Sambo's house for agreeing to be vice president to an infidel, to a minority. That is because that 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 is because of the level of political pride that they have. But we, it is we that run to the north. We with the wealth, we with the population, we with the uh, uh, academic intelligence, we with the scientific know-how. We with the intellectual know-how. We are the same people that will still run to the house of man to seek political reverence. So I ask you, who is really enslaving who? Is it the house that is enslaving you or you that willingly make the house of man important to the point that you make them feel that without them, you cannot have political relevance, relevance in Nigeria? Who is enslaving who? Don't let them they cannot be deceiving you that they are enslaving you or they are enslaving you or they are enslaving, 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 enslaving you. I'm sick and tired of those narratives. Nobody is enslaving Nigeria, but we are enslaving ourselves. <sighs> Nobody is enslaving the South, but the South is enslaving himself. Because we spend our energy and time trying to undo one another. The Igbo nation want to prove that they have a population and therefore they should, they should earn that more relevance to those they perceive as minorities. Even though a lot of people will deny it, but that's the truth. The South-South minorities want to be rebellious and say that, well, since we control the world, you will not come to our region to control us or take our wealth. Then between the Yorubas and Igbos, there is mutual hatred and mutual suspicion. So when we keep fanning embers of disunity, even the Bible said, a house divided upon itself with what? Completely for me. Eh? Uh -huh. A house divided... Uh, among himself, we collapse, we fall, Abi. Uh -huh. So, I know to Sabi Bible where we're like that. Hmm? So, when we have chosen to individualize our struggle, the Igbos are fighting to protect the Igbo interest. The Urobos are fighting to protect the Urobo interest. The Edos are fighting to protect the Edo dynasty, the Edo kingdom. The Yorubas are fighting to protect the Odudua kingdom. The Ijaws are fighting to protect the Ijaw kingdom. Every section of that region is, is individualizing a struggle. Why will the Hausa man not come in 
and take advantage of your disunity. I sang this unity, 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 unity to the point that I got tired of it. Because quite, 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 quite sincerely, we are not ready to embrace that, that ring of unity. We are not ready at all. Now, the young man who called me today also made a statement. He said, why am I emphasizing about consultation? So I asked him and I said, The reason why Nigeria is where it is today is because there was no proper consultation among the federating tribes. There was no constitution, there was no forum, there was no time that all the people came together and said, this is how we want to live together. <laughs> the, the Hausa Caliphate just sat in one place because we wanted the military to go. They just sat in one place and drafted the 1999 constitution that had all the underpinnings to protect the northern caliphate interest. When, when they were designing those the constitution, what were the southerners doing? What were the intel, in, intelligent ones in the south doing? What were the intellectuals in the south doing? They were doing nothing. They were busy looking for angles that they will, you know, augment their selfish and avaricious desires. So I told him, I said, He, uh, what was it? I've forgotten the point I was trying to build up. Now, uh, he said that Biafra is the only hope. I told him that, look, Biafra under Namdekanu will be worse than any other. In fact, South Sudan will be, will be a, 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 just a textbook, man, a textbook reference. Why? Because when IPOB set up its structure, it didn't set up a structure that is all-inclusive, a structure that aggregates ideas, a structure that, you know, aggregates opinions, a structure that confines opinion, a structure that ensures secrecy of opinion. No. Okay, thank you, Mr. Clinton. A house divided among itself cannot stand. Okay, thank you for the listen. Now, the structure of IPOB is a one man, is a structure that is reliant on one man. Now, when the houses, anytime you hear the houses issue a communique, it is a resolve agreed by all the houses. <sighs> and because it is agreed by all the houses, you never see after a, communi a communique is issued, one house man will come and say, no, we don't agree with that statement. Uh, that man is on his own. We don't agree. Because such a communique was arrived at by a contribution of many heads. When the Yorubas want to bring out Amotekun, they make sure that they consult elders, stakeholders here and here and here. And you will never hear it until they issue it out. Because it is a communique, a communique issued by contributions from different opinions. But in the case of IPOB, it is Sinam Dikanu that just sits in one place and designed what he's going to say. He don't, nobody, criticize, nobody criticizes what he's going to say. <coughs> nobody edits what he's going to say. Nobody tells that, ah, this part, if you say this part, it might cause an uproar. Why not say it like this so that Politically, it will not be injurious later because whatever you say out, you can't bring out. So that is one reason why a Biafra under Nam Dikanu's IPOB cannot succeed. The second reason why a Biafra under Nam Dikanu uh, IPOB cannot succeed is that how do you build a country where it's it's uh, the people your your followers. You, you build anger and hatred and bitterness in them daily. They have become so bitter and so angry and so angry. How do you, when somebody is bitter and angry, it is difficult for that mind to reason. A mind that is constantly bitter, a mind that is constantly emotional and angry, cannot reason, cannot create space to, you know, to assimilate inferences so much so that that it becomes reason it's not possible then 
if at all, because Biafra is championed mostly by uh, Igbos, or let me say IPOB Igbos. The question I ask, if you are promising me a Biafra that is going to be better than Nigeria, among the five states you have in the southeast, which state would you say, okay, it's a miniature example of what, because of the prowess or the, or the leadership prowess or the governance style, shows me that, okay, this state can give you a reflection of what the Biafra would be like. As far as I'm concerned, most of in the five eastern states, you have governors that are selfish, governors that do not take care of the people, governors that just take care, think of themselves alone, gov, 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 government that do not care whether the roads are good, whether hospitals are working, whether in fact it it it, it, it it's a crazy society. Do not forget that under Obama and when we had Senate President zone to the south is what will happen. We had five 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 senators struggling to outdo one another no it has to be me no that one it has to be me no who is that person in one regime in one four-year tenure we had five that tells you that tells you that everybody wants to be king nobody wants to bow down for the other person so if we have a country championed by this type of mentality of course immediately we have it we're going to have people struggle for leadership struggle for king struggle for everything so we we, do, we are not just ready <clears throat> we are not just ready please don't be offended you know when i make my videos i say it out black and white i don't i don't take punches i don't take prisoners now you might want to ask why is it that i'm always emphatic on the iboris iboris no the reason is that the solution to the South, please, it's very important that you listen to this. The solution in the South lies with the Igbo race. Any day the Igbos decides to look inward and play the game of politics the way it is supposed to be played, the solution automatically comes to that region. Because one thing I've, one thing I've noticed is that the Igbo man has refused to understand his political strength in Nigeria. In my previous video, I said, polity has three pillars of power. There's political power, there's economic power, there's social power. The houses currently or apparently have the political power. The Igbos have the economic power. The Yorubas have the social power. Now, in order of strength, political power is stronger followed by economic power, followed by social power. One is bent to ask, why is it that the Igbos cannot see that they have economic power? And with economic power, they can negotiate Nigeria to how they want it to be. You can use your economic power to blackmail Nigeria into what you want Nigeria to be. Just as the South said the other time, their strength is the oil they have. When we have Niger Delta, they blew up all the pipes. And before you know it, they not had to come and negotiate with the Niger Delta Avengers. So, the reason why we think we are slaves in Nigeria is because we have refused to understand that we are the ones enslaving ourselves. We have refused to assimilate and understand the kind of power we have. Imagine if the Igbos bring his economic power. The Sasa bring his uh, resource power. And the Yorubas bring their social power. What it, it will make the political power of the North useless. <sighs> but in as much as we are glued or inclined to this indiv individualization theory of struggle. Because in truth, the IPOB struggle, I told the young man who called me to do that. IPOB struggle for Biafra is not a Biafra that picks the interest of other region. It's a, let me tell you this, and I am bold to say this. This is what I think IPOB is doing, or sympathizers of IPOB. This is, this is the kind, this is the mindset I think they have. Now, a lot of them see that this power struggle, because 
The evil man does not realize that his economic power is a strong tool. Instead of him to seize the economy, because they, 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 they own economic power, but the aggregate of the economic power is so segmentalized, so segmentalized or individualized, so that this man, Chief Eze, with his wealth, is only concerned with his small circle built around himself. Chief uh, Namdi is only concerned with the small world built around himself. Nobody wants to integrate his economic power with the other man so that at the end of the day, the might of the Igbo is truly represented when they come with one force through their collective economic power. They can, they can negotiate. They, 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 they. When that happens, the Igbo, the Hausa man will calm down and say, oh boy, let's, let's, let's calm down and talk with these people. But you don't know your economic strength. Instead, you are pursuing things that will not work. We want Biafra, we want Biafra, we want Biafra. Who is going to give you the Biafra? The same man who knows that he benefits more if Nigeria is one. The same man who has already drafted a constitution where there is no breakup of Nigeria. So why not work to get the power? When you get the power, you not shape the constitution into how you want it. So that in the future, when there's a need to break up, you don't need to be saying that we want Biafra, we want Biafra, we want Biafra. You just cite the constitution, and the constitution enables you to go. But when you have a group of illiterates, when you have a group of illiterates championing an organization, they lack the ability to intellectualize issues that borders on concrete and in-depth reasoning. That's why one idiot in one uh, program was asking me, uh, is it that book that uh, Na, uh, Tony Nadi is holding that will give us freedom? It's so, it, it, it's so funny because in his question, he just exposed the depth of his ignorance. So it's not see people like us who are talking don't know that we are suffering in Nigeria. It's not see people like us who are talking in Nigeria don't want freedom. But the idea that one individual through one group Will be redefining people's culture that we will not accept we can't accept it and then yeah i remembered thank god i remembered because i was making one point then i i escaped it the guy asked me in fact that was the first point he said why am i emphasizing on consultation why am i emphasizing on consultation so i told him i said an organization who don't we an organization an organization which doesn't see consultation as paramount is an organization with a far more dastardly agenda than the one we are running from. Nigeria is where it is today because the federating tribe did not sit down to talk about how they should live together. So if you are asking me to join, to run with you, to form another Biafra, without sitting down first and say, eh, I won't follow you, no problem. I won't join this Biafra, no problem. Yes, full I need a kill us, eh, I agree. Full I need a rape our women, I agree. Eh, but calm down. And eh, this new country will they go so high one be. You say, why they ask? Am I not seeing full and full and people raping our women? Am I not seeing full and people killing our people? You see, full and are taking over our land. So I should I should look because Fulanese are taking over our land. I should not ask you again how this side you are asking me to go will be like. I should just follow you like that, my brother. That sense. I've been here for 54 years now. Even the Hausa man no bring that approach. Your agenda is worse than that of the Fulani man. Stop that thing. You get me? It's like God molded these people. Give them sense of making money. Give them. And I also told this man, I said, look, in my culture, success is not measured by the amount of material acquisition. Unlike your culture, where success is measured by the amount of money you've acquired. In my culture, success, you, you, that is not what determines you about success. Success in my culture is intrinsic. Success in my culture is innate. It is what people perceive you. Maybe the way you talk, the wisdom in you, the way you carry yourself, you don't cheat, you don't steal, 
We cannot measure your success by the, your, the... Yes, everybody wants to have a big mansion. But in my village, if they want to call people to come and sit down and talk, the amount of money you have gathered in life will not automatically qualify you to be put him out in every discussion. We have great respect for elders. We have great respect for elders. Even if, even if our elders, they shit for body, you have no right to disrespect. An elder is elder in my culture. <laughs> All the one that you say, uh, uh, you have to earn, uh, as an elder, you have to earn respect. No, 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 no. You see, if our cultures are different, then there's no reason why we should come together. Because the way people got, went and attacked Ikwerimadu and were beating him up, in my place, we can't do that. We cannot, in all honesty, see an elder like a Kurumadu in an Urubo land, a serving politician, and we are beating off, stripping him naked. Say, what did he do? What did he do? You are judge and jury. You, you've judged him, sentenced him, and punished him. That is so. If 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 you are taking me to a Biafra where people cannot be tried. People cannot be given a fair hearing before they are punished. I don't want to be part of that country. I don't want to be part of that country. So, to tell me that Biafra is the key is a big lie. There is no indication whatsoever that the Biafra you are selling to us is going to give us the solution. No, no, no. If, if, if Biafra is going to be key, let's see samples. Let's see indicators that shows that yes, Going to this thing, we are going to be, we're not going to have problem. Otherwise, we will be recreating another South Sudan. So it is not just enough to want freedom. You have to define the freedom. But the people who want the freedom are saying, no, let's not define it. Let's get the freedom before we define it. That's stupid, man. I will not accept that bullshit. That's nonsense. So IPOB is saying, don't worry about defining the freedom. Let's get the freedom first. When we get it, then we define how the freedom will be like. My brother, that's bullshit. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, in my place, so, yes, some, some, no, uh, Deborah Alade, you are right. Some elders don't deserve respect. But in my culture, it is not the place of small boys to go and judge crucify sentence and punish elders we don't do that in my place young people cannot just attack elders and start beating them because when you do that you are creating a society of chaos what we do is if an elder is doing wrong we report it to another to, to the group of elder elders council then the elders council will call him they know how to resolve themselves but you cannot be as a youth and you just <clears throat> let me tell you you youth that you you know how to Know who is doing bad, who is doing wrong. If they carry this Nigeria and give it to you, 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 now, you will mess it, you will do worse than these elders that are here. This, this, you, you, that know how to criticize this elder is doing bad, this elder, uh, an elder who does not have deserve respect. If they carry this country and give it to you, it's okay, see this country, repair it for us, you will do worse. Not with this mentality of uh, we are senior brother, uh, we are minority, uh, this, that, 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 uh, kill this person, kill that one, uh, this one will kill you, a uh, zoo, a zoo. I told him, I said, stop calling Nigeria a zoo. Just because Sinam Dikanu referred to Nigeria as zoo does not make, does not make, does not make uh, uh, Nigeria, the, the word zoo does not, does not have a negative connotation. A zoo is an organized setting. A zoo is, is, a, is an organized setting where, 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 where animals are compartmentalized. Space are determined. This is the lion's space. This is the tiger's space. This is the elephant's space. And the lion does not leave his space to go and terrorize the tiger. Their meals are given as at when they want the, their meal is necessary. They are treated. If they are sick, they are treated. They treat them. They don't. They, they, they make sure that any animal that is sick, they treat it. A zoo is very clean because they, 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 they clean the place every day. So when you say Nigeria is a zoo, is our medical situation, is our medical facilities working? When you grow sick, do you get immediate 
medical attention. If an animal is sick in the zoo, it gets immediate medical attention. So, hey, hey, hey zoo, Nigeria, zoo, 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 Nigeria, Nigeria, zoo, zoo, Nigeria, zoo. And you, in, your, in, in your illiterate mind, you think you are insulting Nigeria. When you describe Nigeria as a zoo, you are actually upgrading it by that terminology. So, you do, because of the emotion, emo, I don't know. So, you, you are, I, 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 I don't, I don't, I don't know. Debra Lade. So you be, uh, I know so you be robo now. Uh, get me for robo land. Small picking, no fee. Go talk to elders. Say uh, one more way. Eh, kaka ule na It's not possible. We don't do that. I beg Debra. No fall, no fall. Robo people hand here. Small picking, no fee. Go talk to elders. Say what they do, they bad. It's not possible. We then they do them. Instead, you you go and tell on that elder. Eh, or say, eh, me go no, me me go no, eh. Me go no oto 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 vote or me go no vote because eh, eh, Papa we eh, Papa we Freddy eh, we can only move eh, because we start to talk eh, me go me share go yo yeah that's what we do no small boy we just go and attack one big man say because he's done you start beating him pull his shirt and naked him slap him ba 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 say he has done wrong then you become that is a lousy society where young one can just Determine who is wrong. You, 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 you. No, nah, no. It's no basis to even to even qualify that as right. So, let me round up this video by saying this. The young man who called me also asked me. So, what is the solution? What is the solution? I told him. I said the solution is this. The real slavery we are in is not slavery to Fulani. It's slavery to our ignorance. So what we should be fighting for is freedom for, from our ignorance. We have become too ignorant to know that we are the one that is stronger than the Fulani people in Nigeria. But because we have refused to integrate our, our collective strengths, the evil man has refused to integrate his economic strength with the South-South uh, world strength and the Yoruba man social strength. We have refused to... We, we, we want to fight this fight from an individual standpoint. I will answer you. So, we have refused to... And it's a good thing, uh, Charleston or Kafa, I'm happy you asked this question. It's a point I really wanted to ask. Thank God you brought... I, I, thank God bless you. I would have forgotten this word. So, thank you for your question. I will answer it. So, the solution is, we must... Find a way to integrate, integrate our collective strengths. What we are doing right now is we are fighting an individualized fight. Individualized fight. The evil man is fighting the fight to pro with a mindset to with an with, with an evil interest. The robot is fighting with an robot interest. The Yorubas are fighting with a Yoruba interest. The Edo's are fighting with Edo interest. So because we have individualize this fight we will keep giving the house man very good opportunities to enter in amidst us and do what they want to do so let me answer uh mr charleston or Kafo. i have seen this uh this argument that ipob is an irrelevant minority in Igbo land and therefore we should not take them seriously my question is this. If they are that irrelevant and minute in Igbo land, how come the majority of those who think differently from IPOB have been unable to silence them since eight years? Because you and I know that the activities of IPOB, in all honesty, without sentiment, have constituted more nuisance, more enmity for the Igbos right now it will be very difficult to even begin to sell, say, okay, let's, me as I am now, it will be difficult to say, okay, uh, my brother, let's come with Igbos together because the activities of IPOB has painted, it has painted the whole scenario very, very bad. So what is it that the majority of the liberal Igbos who don't see what Namdekano is doing right have done to stop him? You keep him quiet and, yeah. and silence in the face of in silence, in the face of adversity, is complicity. When you are silent in the face of 
adversity, you are complicit of that same adversity. So because if everybody is kicking against this one is saying, no, we don't, we are not with you. No, we are not with you. No, we are not with you. But you are quiet. You are lying this man. Talk, go and attack soldiers. Go and kill police. Go and do this thing. Raise flag. This, that. Anywhere they are tying rapper is, is uh, the other that was listening to him with, uh, uh, listen to him with, uh, what's this guy? Um, Dele Momotu. They asked him where and where is Biafra. He said, anywhere they are tying to rapper. Because the man has not traveled to the north, he doesn't know that places like Biliri in Gombe State, there are women tied to rappers. Numa local government in Adama State, they tie tied to rappers. Bill in Borno State, the women there are pure Christians, they tie tied to rappers. In Kaduna, in southern Kaduna, Zango Katav, the women there, they tie tied to rap rapper. Are you saying that Borno State is part of Biafra? Or Gombe is part of Biafra? What? You... When, 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 I don't, we should, know, this thing is not about sentiments. We should not, if you want to, because the whole idea of <laughs> tolerating and you can do despite his excesses is, is suspicious to me. Is, is, is suspect to me. Because everything about this man has, has jeopardized the interests of the Igbo people, and yet you keep defending him. It shows there's something you're also hiding for him. <laughs> to rap a republic. You get me? If this man has traveled, you know that the man, the women in, in Bu, local government in Borno State, they tie rappers. No man local government, other ones say they tie two rappers. Eh? Um, what's this place again? Niger self, they tie two rappers. So constrain your knowledge on what you know about. Do not claim to know everything because when you do that, you only expose the ignorance in you. So finally, again, if I just decided to answer chance to know Kafo because I've been confronted with this this narrative that the Igbos and uh, IPOB they are minority we should uh, we should uh, but when IPOB went to a, a river state and uh, Wike Wike now took took Wike now took an action against IPOB did the five governors of the Igbo state not go and meet Wike to ask him what exactly is the matter so the crap that IPOB is negligible to the population is not sellable to me. To me, I believe that there are those who are actually members of IPOB and are those who are not members but sympathize with what IPOBs are doing or complicit with the IPOB ideology. That's how I see it. I'm not saying you, you feel you are you support them, but just a response to your answer. So in, in, in finally, the solution, like I said, we must find a way to stop this individualization of our struggle by individualization i must see when the Igbo man begin to when the Igbo man begins to see that there's a need to live beyond Igbo interest the robo man see that there's a need to live beyond the robo interest and every tribe sees a situation that transcends their ethnic interest and then they look up to a far more collective interest that takes care of everybody's interest Equally, that's a word that is strange for IPOB to swallow. Equally, fairness, they don't want that one. <sighs> so until that happens, let Fulani will keep killing us. Thank you very much.